Good evening and welcome to Breaking Views on NDTV. I am Ankit Tyagi. Ladies and gentlemen, today largely what we'll be talking about the very elusive opposition unity as uh, opposition parties, those who are hoping to come together on some sort of a common platform and there is one common question that all of them, many of them in blocks or individually are in fact coming together and raising. I'm talking about these, uh, in fact, two pictures. This is largely what we will be discussing on the show. But two pictures today, I want to start by talking about them. One, of course, Manish Sisodia, the leader of the Aam Aadmi Party, uh, right now in the judicial custody at Tehar prison, was questioned by the enforcement directorate. On the other hand, Lalu Prasad Yadav uh, was being questioned by the CBI in a very old land for job scam. Now, in both these cases, while the BJP argues that uh, it is the agencies doing their fair job, the opposition and parties from, where, from uh, which they belong, Ahmadni Party and the RJD, have come out and said that this is just an example of political vendetta, of opposition being arm-twisted on fake charges. That, ladies and gentlemen, you hear these voices individually or maybe in some blocks. The big question is, can even this issue with every party agrees that is a threat to democracy can the opposition party see eye to eye all of them on this as well or not and why i'm saying that because while the opposition parties agree and are raising this clamor against the alleged use or misuse of the central agencies by the modi government ed cbi income tax being uh, questioned every day as being an extension arm of the bharti janta party machinery but when it comes to strongly raising these allegations or assumptions or charges in one voice, the cracks within the opposition begin to appear and arguably give breathing space to the Bharatiya Janata Party. Let me put out two examples for you. Number one, this recent celebration of Mr. N.K. Stalin's 70th birthday. It turned out into a show of opposition unity and I'm saying that with quotes with leaders from the Congress, the Rashtriya Janta Dal, Samajwadi Party, National Conference speaking from one platform, noticeably and significantly, the Aam Aadmi Party, the BRS, the Srinamool Congress, all nursing national ambitions were missing from this picture. As Mr. Stalin attempted to provide a platform for like-minded opposition parties to come together, this seemed a very pick-and-choose moment for who wants to stand on that platform and who does not want to. I want to give you another example. Now, one block you saw there. Recently, eight opposition parties, including chief ministers, uh, also wrote a letter to the prime minister raising their pitch on the misuse of the agencies. This letter was signed by the chief ministers of Punjab, of uh, Delhi. It was also signed... Uh, you know, by a Chief Minister of West Bengal, uh, of uh, Kerala. Uh, they were opposition leaders, Farooq Abdullah, common uh, between Mr. Stalin's uh, podium and uh, here as well, Sharad Pawar, Uddhav Thakre, and also Tejasvi Yadav. But significantly, the Congress and the left were missing from this letter. Now, you would hope, well, I, all these opposition parties at least would be keeping their guns trained at the Bharatiya Janata Party. But if you are a supporter of any opposition parties, you'll slightly be disappointed because largely we see, even in that discourse, there are too many frictions within themselves, which they, which the op political parties, try and address on public platforms. Listen in. When Vipaks, the Vipaks are doing action against these agencies, whether they are our leaders, or whether they are in Bihar, or whether they are in Maharashtra, the Aam Aadmi Party doesn't say anything. Why don't they say anything? Why don't they say anything? आपको डिसाइड करना है कि आप भारतीय जनता पार्टी की बी टीम है या आप विपक्ष में हैं और अगर आप विपक्ष में हैं तो आपको विपक्ष के साथ हर मुद्दे पे खड़ा रहना पड़ेगा और इसमें सबसे बड़ा पाखंड और ढोंग तो भारतीय जनता पार्टी का नजर आता है मैंने इसकी हमेशा जो है इस चीज की खिलाफत की है और वो सिर्फ राहुल गांधी ही नहीं जिस भी अपोजिशन पार्टी के ऊपर जब जब जो है ईडी और सी ने द्वेषपूर्ण कार्रवाई की है हमने बोला है और अगर आम आदमी पार्टी ने राहुल गांधी के खिलाफ ईडी में जेल जाते हुए के होर्डिंग या पोस्टर लगाए हों तो मुझे जो सुप्रिया शेणी जी शेणी जी हैं वो बता दें कांग्रेस ने तो लगाए हुए हमने अगर कभी इसके लिए उत्सव मनाया हो तो बता दें कांग्रेस 
fight with BJP. If they want to defeat Mamta Banerjee with the help of BJP, then how they say they are anti-BJP? And all the played the communal card. BJP of course played the communal card, but CPM and Congress played more than communal part card there. So this is very unfortunate part. But it's a lesson for all of us that we should not listen to Congress. So there could be many reasons why the opposition parties couldn't come together. What Mamta Banerjee was saying was her anger after losing the Sagar Digi seat where the left in the Trinamool, uh, Congress party more or less fought together and defeated and pushed out the Trinamool from the seat which they were ruling for almost two decades. What are the contradictions and why are there are so many roadblocks as far as the opposition unity is concerned? Before I go to my discussion, let's very quickly point out to a few which at least we think uh, are the roadblocks in the larger opposition unity. Prime ministerial ambitions of opposition leaders, be it Rahul Gandhi, Mamta Banerjee, Arvind Kejriwal, KCR, Nitish, all have somewhere individual ambitions to lead the country and become the prime ministers. Rahul Gandhi's leadership, because Congress, no matter uh, whether the opposition, other parties agree or not, at this moment, Congress still have a pan-India presence. It more or less is in direct contest against the BJP in more than 150 seats. But Rahul Gandhi's leadership is unacceptable as far as the opposition leaders are concerned. Then the inability of the Congress to defeat the BJP in face-to-face -face contests. Let me give you a quick example. 2019 elections, 143 seats, where the Congress had direct contests with the Bharti Janata Party. It was only able to win seven. Direct contest of Congress versus regional satraps in many, many states. Uh, whether it's uh, Orissa or, uh, you know, West Bengal uh, point in case, or uh, even Telangana, where the BRS uh, is the dominant force. Growth of the uh, regional parties, like the Aam Aadmi Party, the YRS, Aam Aadmi Party now is a national party, but growth of other parties, like the Aam Aadmi Party, YRS, uh, CP, BRS, all of them has been at the cost of what was presumably the Congress's space. They have eaten into the Congress's space. Inability of the Congress to value add to the regional parties. An example is Samajwadi Party in Uttar Pradesh or RJD in Bihar. The Congress was, did not give that push factor to the alliance factor. Recent example, of course, left in the Congress alliance in Tripura. Fight for regional supremacy versus the national dominance is also something which is an impediment as far as the larger opposition unity is concerned, uh, uh, is, uh, you know, goes ahead of the 2024 elections, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the reason. That's uh, also the, the main factor, if I can tell you uh, why. Just uh, four days ahead, in fact, 400 days, less than 400 days now to go for the big battle of 2024. One question that is being asked again and again, some will argue the whole chasing the opposition unity is not new and has happened before. It happens before every big national election. The question is, are the opposition parties at this moment and in 2024 going to work together as a counter, uh, work as a counterweight against each other or as strategic joint force against the BJP? So let's try and uh, find the answer to this question. Uh, let me very quickly go across and uh, introduce my uh, guest, esteemed uh, guest this evening. A fantastic panel uh, we have uh, at this uh, evening, ladies and gentlemen. Raghav Chadda, Rajya Sabha MP of the Aam Aadmi Party is joining us uh, this evening. We have uh, Supriya Sunet, uh, spokesperson, uh, senior leader of the Congress Party. We also have Mr. Ra Rajdeep Roy, member of parliament from the Bharti Janata Party. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time out and joining us here on uh, Breaking Views. I want to start by asking you, Ms. Vinayat, because we ran that, uh, uh, you know, little snippet of your uh, uh, bite as well when you were speaking at the press conference. This whole question that is being asked again and again, that Congress largely is an impediment, possibly the Congress and all opposition parties, uh, the, whether it's BRS, the Aam Aadmi Party, uh, you know, they've been saying that the Congress party doesn't want to bend. Is Congress the biggest impediment in an umbrella unity that could take on Prime Minister Narendra Modi in 2024? That has to be one of the most juvenile political assessments I have ever heard in a long time. The fact that Congress is an impediment to opposition unity, quite frankly, it's very much the opposite. 
Congress will be the fulcrum and the glue of the opposition unity that we are envisaging for two simple reasons. A, we have a pan-India presence unlike any other political party. And B, we are part, we are fighting the BJP ideologically tooth and nail without bending, without looking in the direction of what could come next at us. And, and quite frankly, look at how rattled the BJP is every time a Congress leader like Rahul Gandhi speaks. Why is it that they don't give similar, uh, you know, attention to anybody else? Because the reality is we're taking them head on. I think I will go back and make the statement that my leader on the 31st of December 2022 made in a press conference in Delhi, Mr. Gandhi, or the statement that Mr. Karge made. You know, this whole mirage that is being spun by some sections of the media, that the BJP is too ready to gurge out, that there is no opposition unity, everybody is a fractured lot. It's very much actually against the polity of this nation. This country has seen a very successful coalition of 22 countries between 4 and 14, 2004 and 14, one that ensured the highest level of growth and one that lifted 27 crore people out of poverty. Right. This country has also, and I will just make a last point, this country has also seen 19 allies of the BJP deserting it ever since the BJP came to power. How come nobody is talking about how allies one after the other are deserting the BJP and that is the political reality of that spectrum. Okay. So I think the attempt to malign India's opposition as if we are all a splintered lot, I think is very much against the ethos of our democracy. And but is that the for. job, like you say, is being done by a section of media because every day, and you heard, I just played out three sound bites uh, from you, from Mr. Saurabh Bardwaj and Mamta Banerjee, largely talking about each other. And Raghav Chadda, I just want to bring you in on no, no, that. No, no, I want to answer that question. Can sure. I take that question for 10 seconds before, I, before I hand it over to Mr. Chadda? There's a very simple answer to this. You know, when the time comes and when the time is ripe and right, we will all stand together. There are political compulsions. You are sending agencies after some members of the opposition. You are coursing them in some or the other way. 95% of the ED cases are all against members of the opposition. You are, you know, you are dumping down our voices. Obviously, there are other compulsions. There are state compulsions. But when it comes to finally booting out the BJP and the RSS, we all, I think, share a very common but view are of those that. compulsions too grave to overcome Raghav Chadda? Because time and again, we have also heard from your uh, party leaders uh, in press conferences, in interviews, that the Congress party is largely also scared as far as the Ahmadni party's growth is concerned. That is the presumption that the Ahmadni party, uh, you know, presents. Point in case Punjab, where the Ahmadni party grew on the largely on the space of the Congress party, and also in Delhi, that this is why. You and Congress can't see eye to eye. We have seen Manish Sisodia's arrest. Congress so far has not come out in the way that other opposition parties are coming out in your support. <coughs> no, I dispute uh, that actually. Truth. Sorry, go ahead. Couple of things, Ankit. First of all, I think what is more important than the unity of the opposition is the unity within the NDA, which you must be discussing. Since it's not the opposition that is running the country, it is the NDA that's running the country. In the last five years, more than nine big, significant allies of the NDA have dumped the BJP. From Shiv Sena in Maharashtra, to Shiromani Akali Dal in Punjab, to Nitish Kumar's JDU in Bihar. They have dumped the incumbent ruling with a brute majority BJP and gone to another outfit or a, an, another ally. So this speaks volumes of the unity that is there within the NDA. However, if you wish to discuss the unity of the opposition, to my mind, uh, these <clears throat> examples that you quoted at the outset, which is a one letter that has been written by eight political parties, which has been signed by five sitting chief ministers, deputy CM, as well as four former chief ministers, uh, it doesn't quite frankly reflect uh, the, you know, uh, the, the state of the opposition. I mean, for example, I'll give you a small example. The uh, chief minister of the left, Mr. Vijayan, who represents the state of Kerala, did not sign that letter. But today, uh, he issued a separate letter mentioning the letter written by those eight parties and said that I joined them in raising this voice hmm. against the, the, the misuse and abuse of the agencies. So therefore, I think these are in plus. Again, the, another, the, the second example that you gave was an event that was hosted by the chief minister of Tamil Nadu, Mr. Stalin in Tamil Nadu where he invited some leaders from the opposition. Now, I am given to understand it was his birthday celebration. He invited some of, uh, you know, the people that are close to him that are worthy of being called his friends from the 
Indian political diaspora but, and they and they showed up. But so I think, have, quite frankly, these are isolated events. It would be grossly unfair to put these events together and and come to a conclusion that the opposition. There is no conclusion. We are only. I'm not running to any conclusion. Me, and both you and Supriya has made an assumption, and you know you were talking about not. We don't talk about the NDA because me, NDA right now. The question is, who is the challenger? And we are going into an election here, so I am talking I about the that. other side, not the side that you possibly would want to talk at this moment. But Raghav, you gave an I example. Will, you said Mr. Stalin might have called his friends there. You may, went to, may I just, uh, to a similar platform. Both the chief minister of the Aam Aadmi Party, when Mr. K C R invited you, the Congress was not invited yeah. there. That's the kind of uh, uh, you know the the pull and push in the opposition that we are talking about. that when you talk Anke about two, anti things. when you talk about taking on the bharatiya janata party for every political party there are regional can i please come in regional there are regional uh, you know there are regional interests more than how to defeat the bjp two things first of all uh, <clears throat> this regional versus national uh, argument that you have just mentioned before us the fact is that forget political parties even the electorate of india is politically astute and sharp enough to understand the difference between a regional battle and the national battle i'll give you an example odisha goes to polls for lok sabha as well as for vidhan sabha on the very same day hmm. when you enter the polling booth every electorate every voter has two machines two evms before them one is the one that's capturing the vote for choosing the chief minister okay. the other for the prime minister and people in a very politically astute manner could prefer one party when right. it comes to the central government and the other party for the state government so therefore i think if Can voters I... in this country are so politically astute so is the opposition however however what is most important is not the opposition's unity is not even the nda's unity i think what is important is the unity of the people of india okay. and how okay. in the year 1977 the people of india got together to overthrow a, an arrogant and and a drunk on power regime okay uh, to bring in change i think something similar is likely to happen right. in the Raj, upcoming years where the people, people will form a coalition mr. it will be the Roy. coalition of the people of india right mr rajdeep roy when we you hear this conversation about uh, you know the opposition unity or them coming together or not coming together essentially it the voters will have to decide because it's not simple arithmetic of two and two uh, you know being put in together uh, to defeat somebody else for the bharatiya janata party at this moment who is the biggest threat is congress the threat that they are more wary of that is what the prime minister kept, keeps talking about when you go for election campaigns or is it a strategic move to prop up the congress so that there is no opposition unity of any sort that can be achieved before 2024 uh uh what i would like to initially say is that theoretically it seems very uh, a bit for the congress because they had been enjoying power for almost over 60 years in the country so uh to be understanding this congress is the is the uh, major stakeholder in the opposition is theoretically okay but what is the practical situation in the country today the practical situation in the country today is that congress has for the past 9 years have failed to throw up a leader of national cognizance someone who's loved and respected all over the country from kanyakumari to uh, kashmir from kutch <laughs> to kohima so, so that is the, the biggest problem i have a very bad yeah. throat i have a very bad throat i have been on a campaign mode and i hope someone will extend me the courtesy that i have not interrupted anybody so what i was saying is that theoretically looking yeah it is okay congress seems to be the largest opposition party but look at the look at the uh, situation today the leader of the congress party does not even enjoy the status of official status of lop in the parliament mm. why has it happened over the past 8 uh, 9 years it is for the congress party to understand uh, and act on it okay. now every time you keep on saying please let me finish every time you keep on saying for us it is very important to have Uh, a, an opposition unity now you have put up a picture which says the prime ministerial experience about six or seven faces you have and in those faces you have missed out on few important mr stalin you have missed out mr akhilesh yadav you have missed out mr mm. uh, sharad yadav you have missed out the abdullahs you have missed out so mr. sharad yadav opposition needs to rally on someone 
who will be the prime ministerial aspirant but how so does it matter to you to i mean who is the who is the opposition prime minister the candidate few, few how does it matter to the bharatiya janata party whether they agree or not look the bharatiya janata party is sitting well in its chair and look at the results that have come i was listening to mr raghav chadda all this while that it is the it is the it is the treasury bench which needs to look at its unity okay. the treasury bench is well Can within its unity in? limits okay. and we have see, shown to the to the country that we have come back to power in two different states right that, that is the own. that is and the height that the bjp with, supriya with, is riding with, on uh, you know the north so election what i want to understand what? from you no, no, is second. it is it important right now is it important right now to give the country or not confuse the country in between who is going to lead the opposition is the face more important than the narrative or the agenda uh, going into 2024 but i think that's the obsession with the media i don't think the opposition is talking about who's going to lead us or who's not going to lead us my leader has said there will be places where we will be large hearted and we will take two steps forward there will be places where we are going to let somebody else occupy the center stage so Which where is the talking about mr rahul gandhi or mr khadge because in the friendly session mr khadge said Ankit. the 2024 Ankit. would be led by the congress party i mean that's what Ankit. he said right Ankit. Ankit, let me finish okay. speaking. Then you can keep coming back with your retorts. Let me finish speaking. Don't don't interrupt in between. Ma'am, I'm just asking you a question, and you yeah, can't have the courtesy leaders. also, at least, ma'am. If I'm I'm only pointing out to one of the facts from your Congress party men only. Yeah, Please so go I ahead. Very, no, no, I think both of them are very clear that there has to be a coalition of parties because regional politics is a reality. The BJP may want to look the other way, which is why they don't have an iota for presence beyond the Vindhyas. But forget about that. That's not the thing that we are discussing. You please tell me one thing: Is there a difference in the opposition as far as demonetization is concerned? Is there a difference in the opposition on a flawed GST? Is the opposition differing on the anti-farmer laws? Is the opposition differing uh, opposition differing on China? Is the opposition in difference of what was being done during COVID? Absolutely not. So I think issues of national importance. Mm. We all share a similar view and a similar ethos. I want to point out one very important thing here. Look at the hangover of the Bharat Jodo Yatra that the BJP spokesperson started from Kanya Kumari. to kashmir that's the hangover and that's what rattles them okay. why do you think the bjp is going on and on about whatever mr gandhi has said in cambridge or ija or wherever else because they're so rattled he's raising issues of the people okay. you want to talk about indian politics let's talk about issues that matter poverty high prices right. unemployment you know the income inequality crime against women why doesn't the bjp want to discuss that have you ever wondered so and oh. the opposition is absolutely one voice unequivocally against the bjp on these ma'am we talk about all issues including this one it's easy in fact to you know try and uh, paint a picture I'm not that only you one i'm saying bjp one topic is no, no, you know no. for, for for at least for in the it. media but raghav i want you to be, uh, come in for the opposition or for parties like yours which has presence now in four state you are also going across and you have announced that you are going to fight elections in other states as well very important elections are upcoming in karnataka in madhya pradesh uh, rajasthan chatisgarh arvind kejriwal was on a tour he said we'll fight elections there we heard this being uh, you know a comment by the congress time and again that you are acting as a b team of the bharti janata party when it comes to crucial state elections is there where a strategy needs to be tweaked whosoever is stronger needs to fight the elections there and everybody needs to pull back <clears throat> uh, i think the strategy should be the strategy that was followed in the 1970s of course a uh, drunk on power regime at that point in time inflicted a lot of pain misery and attack on political leaders as well as the people of india in order to defeat the drunk on power regime all political parties from the opposition got together and the people of india got together on one formula and the formula was one candidate of the opposition against one candidate of the bjp that is one election symbol versus one election symbol of the bjp if that is something that the the people of india and political parties at large can come 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 to terms with i think bjp is not just defeatable a crushing and a humiliating defeat can be handed over to the bjp but That's don't you think one. you going point into these two. states will divide the vote and the whole theory that you are putting out right now fails there no no i this is this has to be dis- i mean i'm not certainly going to discuss this with you or on prime time television this is these are conversations that must happen within these political parties among the senior most uh, decision makers of these political parties i am suggesting a formula i cannot uh, for example suggest what formula 
uh, would apply in a state like Madhya Pradesh or Gujarat or Delhi or Punjab or Bengal for that matter. Okay. I'm saying the overarching theme of this election should be to restore democracy, to ensure that institutions in this country are saved and above all, inflation is curbed, employment is given to people, price rise is defeated and people have opportunities in this country. Okay. Today, unfortunately, banks are being robbed, institutions are collapsing and only few friends of the regime are benefiting. However, having said that, I think, you know, we, 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 we waste a lot of breath uh, discussing the right. unity within the opposition. I, for a fact, believe that opposition must not be uniform. I think if the absence of uniformity within the opposition is not worth uh, okay. discussing. But, but, but what the is worth that I appreciating? Asked, I want a quick response what is, from you. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish my point. Time. You, I mean, it can't be very. Well, that's fine. But let me finish my point. You can be very well out of time. Permit me to finish. It is the diversity among the opposition that must must be celebrated and okay. not the absence of uniformity within the opposition. Right, Supriya, but Aam Aadmi Party coming into the states which are which have usually seen a BJP versus Congress direct fight. Does how does that work in in fact of the larger opposition unity? Because in invariably the vote gets split. Uh, with all due respect to my uh, good friend in the Amadmi party, while the BJP was obsessed with BJY and the hungover was very evident, uh, drunk on power seems to be a predominating theme. Uh, maybe the liquor scam is telling too well on each of the statements being made. I think it's for each member of the opposition to decide that when you go to a place like Goa or when you go to a place like Tripura, who are you harming? Who, right. are, who are you assisting to win? Are you ensuring a BJP victory? And I think those are conversations that the opposition will have and we will not need the Indian media or the BJP to facilitate some of those conversations. All right, so we'll leave it up to Man. you. Uh, uh, okay. You know, I'm, I'm completely out of time, Raghav. This, You've made your point twice and I think... I will just make one factual point. That, you see, we are very often, Ankit, accused of spoiling the game for the BJP. Debate. And it was you accused that we went to, to Gujarat and it is because of us fighting Gujarat, Congress lost the Gujarat election, but okay. we didn't Raja, contest the Northeast election. Congress lost the Northeast election also. We didn't fight okay. in Meghalaya. I, I, we didn't okay. fight I in have Tripura, to but there. Congress uh, lost uh, both Mr. the states. Razdeep Roy, I'm sorry I couldn't come to you, but largely, you know, you understand because you are saying it's uneven debate. Actually, this is the debate between the opposition parties. And as Supriya said, we can only have a discussion. We are no way in any way no, playing uh, or I'm giving just... a platform for them to come to a, some sort of a conclusion on this. But uh, hopefully these things, as uh, Supriya said, would be taken care of uh, behind back doors. But and it will be important and it will be interesting to see, ladies and gentlemen, the kind of larger strategy that we see ahead of the 2024 polls. Very important elections which are going to take place in the country next year. That's all the time that I have in this edition. Thanks to all my guests for joining us. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in as well. Very happy Holi. See you.